We are tinkering, exploring, learning, and having a ton of fun today as kids take over the Amazium. Stay tuned. Downtown Now's Amazium extravaganza starts right now. opened in July of 2015, the Amazium has been a hub for curiosity, learning, playing, and fun for adults and kids alike. Today, we are showing you the 50,000 square foot museum through the eyes of some very excited helpers. Let's go to the side door and meet with the team. Welcome to the Amazium. Are you ready to come play? Yeah. Awesome, let's go on in. Woo, welcome, welcome, yay. Woo. Woo. Yay. Hi guys, welcome. <laughs> This is Kimberly and she's gonna take over from here. Great, hi Kimberly, where are we right now? We are in the Curiosity Corner, which is the museum store here at the Scott Family Amazium. Nice, okay, I see a lot here for people to choose from and play from, and the kids have found some of their favorite things now too. Tell me about the inventory, has it changed? Yeah, so we worked really hard to make sure that the merchandise in our museum store um, allows kids to take that curiosity that they're um, experiencing throughout the exhibit hall home with them. Um, so whether you're exploring circuits or you just want a memento to remind you of the great time you had with your family while you were here, you can find that here in the museum store. Awesome. Want to show me something? Yeah. What's one of your favorite things or like an area that's just come in? Yeah, so one of our promotions this month is um, this this, later this month is a National Week of Making, so we're promoting cool. making and tinkering throughout our store. We actually had a new product release um, curated by us here at the museum. What? Okay, where is that? Yeah, so that is, um, this right here is called Scrappy Bots. It is an activity kit, so we took three of our favorite tinkering and making activities that we do at the museum all the time and packaged them up with a fun guide that you can do as a family at home and explore. Okay, well, I am gonna check this out while the kids find some of their favorite products and then we'll head to our next spot. How does that sound? That sounds great. Awesome. These are so cool, look at that. What do you say we walk oh, on over to the fabric shop and meet up with everybody? Yeah. yeah? Okay, cool. Whoa. Whoa. This is awesome. Ah, we're expecting those lights to be off. This is so cool. <laughs> Welcome you all. Welcome to, to our fabrication shop. I'm Sam. We're so excited to have you part of Team Amazium today. You ready to see some cool stuff? Yes. All right. Well, if you think this thing is cool, our, we, it's the Hyper Cube. We have one for you to step into and make a quick change to be part of the Amazium team. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Those shirts are awesome. Okay. Whoa. You ready to make a change? Yeah. All right, team, let's get to it. I just learned that you create some of your own exhibits here. 
Can you tell me a little bit about what that entails? Sure can. I mean, this is the thing we love. We work in a place about creativity, so we use that creativity to make the things we play with. So we have a fully functional shop where we take ideas that we find, we take science principles and art, we try and put them in action. Like one we have here. If you like the mirrors super that we- cool. It's crazy. If you like the mirrors that we saw, Isaac, can you run your hand around the backside? So we curve mirrors. Whoa. Oh, there That's you go. Cool, right? So instead of having a flat mirror, if you have a lot of curved mirrors and lights behind it, you can get these beautiful reflections. They're called caustics. And so this is one that we think will turn into a full exhibit uh, this fall when we open up our show um, uh, uh, for everyone. But we're going to play with it first because by playing with it, we understand it a bit more. Let's, let's see two hands there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we're playing around with a couple of different ways we might either reflect or show light. Is it better with this up or, or down? You're giving us yeah, feedback. Down. down? Let's do that one. Yeah, it gives it that like pearly color. Yeah, kind of moody, right? I like that. This playing around with it is really important for us. This gives us the feedback of what's interesting and what we're going to play with and what we can then learn from, whether it's science, art, technology, or nature. I think that's so important. Playing is a way of learning. So that's exactly what we're doing here. And I know we have another exhibit we're going to go to and I've heard that it's actually a very difficult one, so we need a huge team. So Team Amazium, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Bring it in. Let's go to the next exhibit. One, <laughs> two, three. You're watching the Amazium Extravaganza Show. We'll be right back. Being helpful is what Arvest Bank is all about. And part of being helpful is listening to our customers, which is one of the reasons why Arvest Go, our mobile app, has been certified two years in a row by JD Power for providing an outstanding mobile banking experience. You can easily pay friends, securely lock and unlock your cards, plus deposit checks, pay bills, and more. So download Arvest Go today. Arvest Bank, ready to help. Home is a place we've all seen a little too much of these past few months. But home was all we had. So as we go back out into the big wide world, maybe we'll return with a new appreciation for the place that kept our loved ones safe and close beside us. Because even after 114 years in the business of home, one thing is more clear than ever. When home is all you have, you certainly have a whole lot. Make the Scott Family Amazium in Bentonville your destination for fun, fun, fun. With over 50,000 square feet of interactive exhibits and ample space outdoors for free range play, the Amazium is your place to create amazing experiences for the entire family. It's a hit with families and children of all ages. Plan your visit at amazium.org. Guys, thank you so much for coming here today. I need some help. Can you guys help me out? Yes. All right, so what we're doing here today, we need to make sure that we are checking all of our exhibits to see if they work. And this one only works when you have a large team. Can you guys work with me as a team to see if we can get yes. this to work? Yes. Perfect, okay, so this is our Nickelodeon N. Okay, and we have to work together as a team to find the different circuit, or the circuit matches. Okay, so there are all sorts of cool icons that match up together, and we need to find those matching icons and see what happens. Do you guys think you can help me find these matching icons? Yeah. Let's do it, all right. Where do we want to start first? You want to start here, okay. What do you think goes, whoa, you found one. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Let's see if we can find another one. What's the match for this, for this net right here? What do you think that match is? Oh, nice. Can we it? find it? Oh, it's not the dog. Is it? Not the beach ball. Let's see. What if it comes over here? Do we think that's a jellyfish net? So what if? Oh, 
the but jellyfish you're... net isn't... What if we try to hold hands and connect it together while holding hands? Can we do that? Yeah. So can you grab her hand? Nice. You grab... And now you... Got it. Hold her hand. Whoa! <laughs> it changed colors! How did that happen? We found the match. You found the match that and you worked so together to combine the match. Let's see if we can find some more matches. we can reach but you know what I've got a cool tool Ooh, right over cool. here <gasps> called alligator clips alligator clips might be able to help us match all of our our matching icons together have you guys ever used alligator clips before yes. okay so they're called alligator clips because you can see if you squeeze down on the on woo, on the clip it looks like an alligator chomping, right? Nice. So let's try to use these alligator clips, connect them together, and match all of our icons at once. One, two, three. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, that is so cool. What happened is this is a giant circuit board and we just connected all of the circuits using alligator clips and our bodies. Do you know why our bodies work with the circuit board? Our bodies have energy, that's right. We have electricity running through our body. So we were able to link that electrical power together and create an awesome colorful rainbow. You guys wanna do it one more time? Yeah. Let's do it one more Let's time. Let's do it. Grab, get her hands. Hold All right, ready? Two. One, two, three. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> guys, we're like superheroes. Yes. Super, super cool. Well, it took us a while to, to find all of those connections, but because of you guys, we were able to make sure this exhibit works and works very, very well. We saw an awesome rainbow, we saw all the cool surprise colors, and I don't know, I had fun. Did you guys have fun? Yeah! Perfect, that's all that matters here at the Amazium, is exploring and having fun together. Thank you guys so much for helping me out with this. Thank you, I think that deserves a Team Amazium all in, right? Oh, Join us. you're gonna You're gonna have honorary. to show me how to do this, let's do it. Team Amazium, one, two, three. Team, Team Amazium! Amazium! <laughs> You are watching the Amazium Extravaganza Show. We'll be right back.
Now that we've figured it out, I'm gonna let the kids play and we're gonna stop and check in with Dana and Sam. The rainbow took some time. <laughs> it did. Sam Dean, founding executive director of the Amazium. Thank you for just chilling with me. This is more my speed, this, this nice log cabin here inside the Amazium. You know, when we were building the Amazium, people didn't want to leave. People told us they want to have, they want to remember what the past looked like. Mm -hmm. And I think they had it right. I love having a little porch to relax, have conversations like this with you. This is a great place to chat. We were watching the kids create the rainbow arch and those kind of things sometimes aren't instant. They take time, but we showed, they showed perseverance. And that's something you teach a lot here at the Amazium. Yeah, in fact, that's, you know, the, the best time that you're learning is when you're kind of stumped at first. Mm -hmm. If you can figure something out right away, you probably haven't learned a whole lot. You probably already know how to do it. And I think the end was a great example. You, you watched these moments where kids were having to figure this out and then it didn't work quite right. And so then you've got to troubleshoot and spend time and you've got to persevere. You've got to have some grit because mm -hmm. the kids could have walked away at any moment and they stuck through it. And boy, the look on their faces at the end, oh my gosh. I mean, you could just feel that energy and that joy when they finally got it to, to rainbow up. Such a transferable skill set, especially in Bentonville and Northwest Arkansas. We have such a entrepreneurial ecosystem. You have to know how to persevere. Businesses aren't built overnight, you know, so it's, it's a great skill to teach your kids in such a fun environment. Yeah, I mean, learning how to figure it out and not give up I feel like that's entrepreneurship 101. Mm -hmm. You got to figure it out for yourself. Find people to help you like a Kobe. Find a Kobe to help you. Um, and then make sure you stick through to the end. I wanted to go back to the beginning of the Amazium. And it was also something that took a lot of time and a lot of perseverance. It, it took almost a decade um, from the moment. Thank you, Emma. Ooh. Sam, can I offer you an apple? Oh my gosh, this is a perfect <laughs> apple. Thank you. From Good the vintage. minute that you guys thought of the idea to have the Amazium, it, it took almost a decade to have this building here that people could enjoy. Tell us a little bit about how that happened. Well, in fact, I came in about eight years after the original mm -hmm. ideas happened. And this is what I love. Children's museums get formed around dinner tables. Mm -hmm. Parents who want to create some amazing moments for their kids, learning moments that are also fun and playful. And this whole project started around dinner tables. Mm -hmm. um, and it took a board of directors. It took, it took a group of volunteers who, at every moment where they could have given up, just like with the Nickelodeon mm -hmm. N that we had, um, they persevered, they held events, they raised funds, they got their 501c3, they did all these milestones, um, and then eventually hired a team. And I was fortunate to be uh, the, the first uh, executive director to come on board mm -hmm. to kind of take the reins and work with the community and with the board to turn this, this uh, set of plans, what we had was about 20 pages of drawings into uh, what you see around us today. And it's a 50,000 square foot museum. It will be getting bigger. What does it take to run something like this? A lot of patience, Sam, <laughs> but what else aside from patience? It takes a lot of patience. Um, you know, I mean, one of the things, I think one of the secrets of a, a, a building like this, a type of learning place like this mm -hmm. is that the building is, is actually in service of a greater mission. It's about learning, it's about creativity, uh, creativity, curiosity, and community are three Cs. And the first thing is it takes building <clears throat> a great team. And so that what we've done is we put in place an incredible team that has been growing and learning themselves over the last handful of years. It takes a lot of perseverance because mm -hmm. sometimes you just don't know what you don't know until you start actually building exhibits until the guests are invited in to be able to be part of it. So it too takes a lot of grit to kind of run a place like this. <clears throat> the other thing is it takes an amazing community. This community has supported the Amazium at every turn, at every idea we had, the community has been there to help support it. And that's what I love. It's a place not just for the community, but it's been by the community. The community supported you all through a really interesting pivot for all of us when we had to navigate COVID. You have a hands-on museum that had to stop everything for a little while. But I remember even going to um, the Ungala where we're driving through and picking up boxes to bring home and tinker at home. You guys navigated that in a really unique way and, and it shows perseverance and creativity. What was what were those almost two years like? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> we like to forget those sometimes. Um, <laughs> it's a whole different lifetime. <laughs> it feels knock like a lifetime wood. ago, I hope. Yeah, right, yeah. knock on. We have lots of wood around us. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think like everyone, we had to, when we closed our doors March 13th, 2020, we had to 
figure out what is being a place that's about curiosity, creativity, that's hands-on in nature. What does it mean to do that when the very things that are our strengths we're not able to do together? And, and we're not sure when we'll be able to do it again. Um, so first thing we did is, you know, we started connecting with our community partners. Um, with no one coming through our door, um, mm -hmm. our funding was in question. So we're able to get partners together to help fund our team to stay in place. Mm -hmm. Over half the museums around the country um, had to make different choices with their team and, and had just really tough times being able to maintain. But being able to maintain our team intact, then we can move. How do we deploy our team in different ways? Mm -hmm. And so we had our teams doing things like going to uh, next uh, 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 circle of life and, and some retirement communities and chalking out in front of places we had. We launched Amazium U, a way to do uh, learning and tinkering at home. We did our first, our fundraiser during the pandemic um, was all about not being as much around each other, but still being able to play within close proximity. We moved a lot of pieces outside. A lot of it was just a team who said, hey, we can figure this out. It's not a problem that's intractable. Um, but we got to do it together. So we spent time kind of figuring out lots of different ways to play, be hands-on. Even if we couldn't be uh, physically together, we could at least be socially together via technology or outside. Something I think that's really neat and unique about the Amazium that maybe not everyone notices is you all just put your hands out and, and give the whole community a big hug. You have priceless nights mm. for people that maybe financially can't always visit the Amazium and you have um, sensory friendly days and nights for people that maybe need to experience the, the amazing in a different way. Um, tell us about those and how you plan to even maybe expand those in the coming years. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you hit it right in the head. We, we can't be about community if we're not for all the community. Mm -hmm. and, and so for us, it's a journey of learning. It's a jur uh, journey of just listening to different, um, you know, we talk often about community as a singular thing, but we, we know it's not. It's a collection of communities and each has their own needs and and wants and desires and financial access is one. So like priceless nights or, uh, you know, the thousands of passes we give away uh, for Amazium for All are one mechanism. Um, having bilingual signage is another one and sometimes trilingual materials. We know language barriers can be another one. Sure. So we're going to continue having listening sessions with communities of all different uh, types and backgrounds here uh, and making sure that we're uh, both accessible and welcoming uh, to, to all. Now it also means we need to age up a little bit. So we're gonna look at different audiences like working more with teens and adults. Um, in fact, as the museum is looking to make its changes, the space may change and reflect some of uh, uh, experiences for teens and adults getting in, getting kind of dirty with their hands um, uh, in a shop environment or, or in an exhibit hall. As an adult, I will say that the adult nights here are fantastic. It's super fun to get a babysitter and <laughs> stay at home and come explore the Amazium with your husband or spouse or, or good friends. So that's something I hope you keep because we enjoy those. Uh, so you are, I don't want to say you're growing up because it's not fun to grow up. The Amazium is growing just bigger, um, expanding. Tell us a little right. bit about some of that. Yeah, Tom Waits, I don't want to grow up. No, right? we don't want to grow up. <laughs> uh, we don't because play is how we want to learn through our lives. Mm -hmm. Um, but we know that, that more people need more opportunities to play. So you know, the Amazium, uh, we need more space. So we're going to be looking to expand and we're looking to bring a community-based maker, uh, maker space as part of it. We know teens and adults have incredible capacity uh, to be able to imagine ideas. And now we want to be able to put the tools and the mentorship in hands to be able to make those ideas come to life. We know we want to do more science and technology rich experiences, more STEM rich experiences. So we'll be increasing galleries and our work with teachers. We need more classroom space so that we can work with kids and adults at the same time as it is now. We end up having to choose which audience we're working with on a given day based on the space that we have. What is, just to end this, if kids have never been here or if they have, what's Sam's pick for the best thing to do within the Amazing? I know it's hard, but if you said you have to come here and do my favorite thing, what's your favorite thing? So. So uh, I, I, I am horrible at this pick your favorite thing game. So I'm going to try because <laughs> what you need to do is come and explore and be ready to come back. Mm -hmm. I think if you have an extra set of clothes, you should definitely go into the water area. You're going to get a little wet, but it's going to be worth it. And if you're over seven, go into our tinkering hub because mm -hmm. we're going to put tools in your hand. We're going to introduce you to some explorations that you probably haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to inspire you to then try some things at home. Water is my favorite too. It's the best. 
<laughs> yeah. Once you know that if you got kids, yep. bringing some extra clothes and you're good to go. Let them run around outside afterwards. They'll dry. They'll be fine. <laughs> All right, Sam, I'm going to sit here and enjoy this delicious red apple and, and enjoy this beautiful cabin. Thank you for joining us. And thanks for letting us explore the Amazium today. Uh, thanks for coming out. This is uh, fun to be able to play with you and Team Amazium today. Yes, and Downtown Bentonville Incorporated, you're one of our favorite partners to work with. So we appreciate you and, and can't wait to work with you in the future. Yeah, likewise, come on back anytime. Thank you so much to the team at the Amazium. I had a ton of fun and I hope you did too. To learn more about the Amazium, head to amazium.org. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,